can't hear you yet, but we can see your screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen and now we can hear you also. Okay, can you please confirm whether you see my screen in slideshow mode? Not yet. Right now it just looks like the PowerPoint slides. Mm. I don't know why technology <laughs> seems not to be in my favor. <laughs> so the only thing I can suggest, if, you, if you're seeing the PowerPoint screen, you might be able to, to click on the duplicate that's what that, that's what I, I, yeah. I did. Oh, now it works. This looks good. Okay, perfect. It takes time, but uh, yeah. So once again, thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, uh, my presentation will uh, give us uh, the titles theory status about adaptation, adaptation uh, in Africa. And my uh, talk draws on two set of work. We conducted uh, a global review on adaptation research. Uh, and um, I want to give um, a bit of highlights uh, showing what is the share of Africa. And then we also have another research on feasibility and the effectiveness of adaptation research. So I combine those two pieces uh, 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 here. Uh, yeah, so I don't know how it's going to be structured, but please feel free to stop and ask questions when needed. Roughly my presentation will, as I said, the overview of adaptation research globally and, and what uh, we have uh, uh, for Africa, and I can highlight some key knowledge gap. So if I may start with the overview of adaptations uh, uh, globally, uh, we see that the Paris Agreement commits party to track uh, uh, climate adaptation progress. Uh, and we expect that the assessment of adaptation progress can facilitate the sharing of best practices so we learn from each other. It also helps to identify gaps and support prioritizations of adaptation finance. And of course, map evidence across regions and sectors. So then we can see where we still have gaps and where what is happening in each of each of regions. Yeah. So the adaptations uh, action documented in the academic uh, uh, literature provides uh, a valuable F uh, uh, information to, uh, to track adaptation progress on the ground. So this is. Uh, the process we follow with the GAMI database. So the GAMI, as I said, is stand for global adaptations uh, uh, methods. Uh, uh, and um, it involves 126 researchers uh, where we use uh, machine learning method to review 48,000 articles just to get a better picture of how adaptations uh, uh, research are distributed across geographical regions, what are the scopes, uh, and, and where are the, the gaps. So it's a kind of iterative process. It focuses mainly on empirical uh, literature. So we don't consider uh, theoretical papers on, on adaptation. That's not the issue. We want to have a kind of mapping of uh, where adaptation, uh, what adaptations approach is used where and, and, and uh, what are the gaps. So we focus on empirical cases. We reflect on publications and after AR5. So we started uh, 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 considering the references from 2014. And, and the protocol tree on categorization of, and priorities outlined in the IPCC uh, uh, assessment, uh, and mainly the working group two. It includes human assisted responses uh, within natural systems, and it includes papers that were indexed. Uh, so we started to review the title, abstract, and keywords. And we only consider English written papers. So that might be a, 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 a limit to this. In terms of some finding, I can highlight that uh, academic studies report adaptations and responses across global regions. And then in, the, in terms of the global south, uh, that's where we have the greatest numbers of, of, of adaptation papers. 
uh, and uh, the first shares are from Asia, 45% uh, of, uh, of uh, available references in Africa, 32%. We have a minority of publications focused on uh, uh, adaptation responses from Central and South uh, America, 6%, and small Iceland states, 2%. So this is a kind of uh, geographical distribution of the uh, adaptations uh, uh, um, publications. In terms of um, content, uh, sectoral distributions, uh, here you can see clearly that food is the food sectors is the main focus of the most coverage and then we have uh, uh, poverty uh, livelihood and sustainable uh, things so that is the second one and we have health so this is the global perspective and then we can see how those uh, this, uh, 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 sectors are distributed across uh, the regions uh, here i want to focus on africa and then you can see that uh, it's with, uh, we have uh, in Africa, we have food and poverty as the main uh, 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 sectors uh, covered. We have more or less the same pattern in uh, Asia, where you see also food. And then here we understand food broadly, which includes agriculture uh, 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 and the nutrition, so all the related uh, aspects. And then we, can, we have also in, in Asia poverty and health. To some extent, the health sector uh, is uh, the, sec the third one also in, in Africa. And then when you look at uh, uh, Europe, you don't have this kind of uh, distributions. It's more balanced, not the same um, um, uh, in the, uh, intensity, which uh, shows uh, or confirmed uh, the uh, evidence that uh, the developed countries mostly focus on other aspects, not really adaptation. So you can see mitigation mainly is um, a stress in uh, developed countries. So we also look at the type of responses and uh, we, we have uh, four categories of responses. We have technological and infrastructural, institutional, nature of this behavior and, and, and uh, cultural. So this is the global distribution. And when we look at zooming in and then and look at uh, at uh, uh, Africa, you can see again that uh, you can see that uh, um, behavior or cultural change is the first uh, set of uh, responses. Then we have the yellow, the nature base, of course, in different sectors, including forestry, uh, agriculture. And we have the red, which is a behavior, and uh, sorry, we have the gray, which is a, a technological infrastructure. And the institutional is quite low, where I, when you look at uh, other uh, regions like Australia, Australia, Asia, you can see that institutional is at a quite uh, uh, good position. So again, it confirmed the uh, uh, evidence from literature, which is in Africa, the governance systems uh, is a relatively poor. So, yeah. And then we look at the hazards. And then you can see here the general, the global distribution of hazard across uh, uh, the regions. And then when we zoom in Africa, we see that uh, that in general climate change, we see that uh, 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 precipitation variable, uh, uh, flooding, uh, heat, uh, major hazard. Um, again, more or less the same patterns, not some the same kind of intensity uh, with Asia. Uh, and you can see it's quite contrasting with other regions, um, Oceania, Europe, or North America, or South America. And uh, I, I want to uh, uh, stress on the fact that this is not um, you know, field work, it's literature based review. So it's uh, really evidence that are articulated in the existing literature. And we are also interested in the GAMI uh, uh, work to look at actors responding to hazards who are involved in the responses. And you can see globally, we have adaptation options are more 
individuals at households level, but then uh, to we have government, local government, but also national governments more or less have the same uh, set of uh, 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 level of action. We have civil society uh, as third. And then when we look at uh, uh, Africa, we can see that most adaptations responses are uh, led by individual or are still at individual or household skills. We have um, uh, the uh, local government and national government, and to some extent, CEO, which include N NGOs, uh, also leading some or, or driving some adaptation uh, responses or, or promoting. And then it's slightly different when you look at the, the, uh, uh, the picture of other regions. Of course, we are more or less following the same pattern, which show again that the global south has uh, more or less the same passion, so same way of doing this. If you look at Asia uh, and Africa, you can see again that most adaptation responses are individuals or at household level. Then we have local governments uh, and national governments. When you look at Oceania, uh, Oceania or Europe uh, and, and South America or North America, it's slightly different. We are also uh, uh, interested in the transformational uh, change, or, or you can see that uh, the, the recurrent uh, um, narrative today is that uh, current adaptation path may not be enough uh, to cope with uh, to deal with adapt, uh, climate change and we need more transformational change and when we look at uh, uh, how strong adaptations and options are implemented across the globe uh, are in stimulating this transformation we can see that in africa you see where we have uh, the when it's a uh, uh, dark uh, uh, green we have high when we have uh, light uh, green, we have mediums. And then when we have, uh, you can see the low. Uh, and if you look at the Africa uh, box, it's more or less low transformation. So which shows that the kind of uh, responses we have uh, here in Africa are not sufficient to uh, stimulate a, a, a transformation. Uh, compared to other regions where you see, for instance, North America, or, or when you look at the South and Central America, uh, you see that uh, the contrast is there. And then we can have uh, more or less, again, the same pattern with Asia. Yeah, so what we capture under this transformation, uh, we have different uh, 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 contents, we have the Death or score the deep uh, the speed sorry and the and the limits that's uh, what we frame uh, how we frame um, uh, transformation. Now I'm going to zoom in, in on adaptation research in Africa, and then we can see that um, oh, sorry, adaptation so to climate change is one of the most urgent uh, in in development uh, agenda for Africa. And uh, choosing it, uh, a reliable uh, or most feasible adaptations uh, uh, strategy requires robust evidence, mainly to inform policy uh, policymakers uh, to know what type of adaptation responses uh, uh, to for adaptation path to follow. It's important for them to have convincing evidence. So we try uh, to look at uh, 24 adaptation options. Uh, to assess the feasibility. Uh, the feasibility here uh, 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 was assessed uh, through different dimensions, economic, uh, environmental, institutional. And then we assess also the effectiveness. The effectiveness uh, was uh, the capacity of the, of the action to reduce risk. Again, we use the uh, existing literature and for the selections of the 24 type of um, uh, adaptation responses, we um, had uh, uh, stakeholder consultations in asking uh, different type of stakeholders, what are the most appealing or the priority 
uh, we can center for Africa in terms of adaptation responses. And here you can see a kind of um, mapping of adaptation uh, responses, uh, uh, adaptation uh, action reported in the literatures across regions uh, of Africa. And we uh, have uh, different sectors, cities, water, ecosystem, health, poverty, and food. And if you see, I don't know how clear this um, map is for you, but you can see that sustainable water management is the most uh, cited options in, uh, in the literature. And it's uh, widely uh, implemented. And we see that it's mainly used in East Africa, then followed by uh, uh, the resilience infrastructure and the technologies, uh, which is uh, uh, the uh, most uh, referred in, uh, in, again, in East Africa. So this is a kind of mapping of adaptation options across Africa. Now we try to uh, 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 count the number of adaptation action recorded uh, for each country's so region and sectors. And you can see that food sectors for Africa is the dominant uh, adaptations uh, where we have the most uh, important adaptation actions, uh, followed by health, poverty, water, uh, ecosystems, and cities. Uh, so this is the, this, uh, this piece, the C section shows how those options uh, or sectoral options are distributed across the African regions. But uh, yeah. Uh, and then this is the uh, table showing how uh, uh, feasibility uh, or, and effectiveness uh, is, um, is clustered and operates in, in Africa. And I just want to highlight one example uh, to show how we read this, uh, uh, this table. Uh, if you look at uh, agroforestry, we see that uh, agroforestry, where you have uh, uh, this uh, uh, dark uh, uh, blue, uh, agroforestry is uh, effective in reducing uh, uh, climate risk. And uh, in terms of feasibility, you can see that we have medium feasibility for economic, uh, economic sorry, you see for economic, uh, we have a, a, a medium. Uh, for technological, we have low for this option of agroforestry. And then we have uh, also low for institutional, it's medium for uh, uh, social, uh, cultural, and environmental. Uh, in terms of confidence, uh, uh, we can just, uh, this is a, a typical IPCC language. but. Yeah, what is the whole story behind this assessment? Uh, we are quite convinced that it's quite a challenging for government to implement all adaptation options. Or sometimes where we see that uh, this adaptation option work in one region, we assume that it can also work elsewhere. And without this assessment, you can just replicate without considering the context. And this kind of a work, uh, is uh, 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 showing the need to provide a strong, robust evidence to policy mechanisms, so then they can be aware of what would be the uh, uh, the effect of those uh, uh, actions, mainly in the national adaptation plan. So that uh, uh, why we thought it could be uh, uh, part of um, of this assessment. It is quite new and it attracts a lot of attention in the Adaptation Future Conference uh, is coming in October. And I know that this will uh, 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 get a huge echo there. So the feasibility assessment uh, uh, helped to also assess the complexity in adaptation uh, uh, practices. And, and we clearly see that uh, 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 adaptations and option might show low feasibility uh, uh, in, 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 in uh, a, a region, but it's still being uh, deserved for community because of the assessment, of course, I should also mention that this assessment was literature based. And what we are trying to do now 
is how we move from the literature to the practice. Uh, we engage the community to also uh, uh, validate the uh, 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 literature-based uh, assessment and to see how, because there are many things that may not be captured in the literature. So. And we clearly also see that uh, context is a key uh, consideration regarding the feasibility of options. Uh, it's important, as I said, it's, it's not because one option to work in, uh, in a region that it should work elsewhere. So, yeah, in terms of gap in both knowledge and practice concerning, uh, concerning adaptation feasibility and, 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 and effectiveness is still there in many, in many cases for Africa. And uh, we think that um, the gap uh, could be attributed to different factors, the locally specific evidence uh, limited. We didn't, we only use the literature to assess this. We don't uh, engage in the community and get uh, their perspectives. So, so this is uh, what we are trying now to do. Uh, incomplete temporal and spatial data and data availability is something quite in, uh, a serious challenge for Africa. We only use literature available. We are not sure uh, that uh, we have a, a good coverage. So that uh, uh, can be a limitation. And then consistent monitoring and metric for measuring adaptation outcomes and effectiveness. I said that it's uh, quite a recent, this approach. It uh, need more um, uh, um, energy to improve the methodology, but make sure that uh, it has a, a good coverage. So ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, what uh, I wanted to share and bring the flavor of adaptation responses uh, from Africa and try to show the gap between global patterns and Africa's uh, uh, design uh, and what we see as the most feasible and effective options uh, in Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Edmund. Um, very interesting talk there. I wonder if there are any questions in the room to get us started. Yeah, I, I see that there's some in the chat here as well. Um, so while I while I skim this, uh, Edmund, I wonder if you could say a word. Uh, you, you said this very explicitly, but of course your your approach was looking at English language articles. So when you showed the map of Africa, um, unsurprisingly, places with with large English populations showed up a little bit higher, like Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana. Um, so I wonder if if you see that as a follow-up study, or if this remains kind of a blind spot in the IPCC approach, considering the orig original drafts of IPCC are written in English. Oh, uh, wait, we, we lost your, your audio. There you go. Sorry. Yeah, it should be okay now. Yeah, we are aware that the, uh, uh, just uh, uh, limiting to English uh, uh, literature can be restricted. And uh, yeah, we offer just a method and we expect that it can be used uh, across uh, different regions for more, um, how we say, more disaggregated assessment. Uh, so the language is a major barrier. And we also consider only published uh, work. We didn't uh, uh, capture the great literature or, as I said, the community perspective. Now, as I, as I mentioned, what we are trying to do is uh, how we make this more uh, uh, community driven, so led by, uh, by community members, and, and of course, using available references, but try to uh, cross check uh, or validate uh, the outcomes with communities and, and, and then the local decision makers. And again, this assessment was done at the scale of Africa. Uh, it didn't downscale uh, to see how it happened to work with the patterns in, in, at country's level, and even at country at a, a sub-national level. And, and this can make a difference. And we expected that this will be taken uh, uh, up and, uh, and, and be used across, uh, across scales, and, and, and of course, across languages and communities. Thank you. Um, there's a question in, uh, in the room here, but I just want to read quickly the, the chat question from Vincent. Uh, he was asking if there are uh, kind of more, or if you could share some more thoughts 
on the complexities of certain adaptations and if that affects the feasibility of those adaptations. Um, and maybe while we're on that topic, I'll just add one more element there, which is that I noticed that many of the adaptation options were targeted at individuals uh, and, and households, and whether that, that as a fundamental approach is more or less feasible, if you have any comments on that. Uh, just to, to note, Vincent also mentions things like political will and finance. Yeah, so um, uh, total for the reason why some adaptation measure have many complexity because context matter and uh, adaptations uh, is uh, really depend on people's expectation and people's aspirations. Sometimes people believe. Uh, uh, one typical example is uh, uh, water management where the assessment clearly showed that the sustainable water management can be uh, effective in reducing risk. And we see that, uh, I want to highlight uh, the case of um, uh, uh, some countries in Africa where during the 80s, uh, 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 small scale or large scale irrigation was promoted uh, to support agriculture, but didn't make any significant change because first, the maintenance of those infrastructures beyond the control of communities, they don't have the capacity. It was run by the, by the states for some years, but after that, they left it to, 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 the, to the community. And most of those irrigation infrastructures are there not used because people, they don't have the capacity to manage them. So again, it's a really about this contest about the need, about the capacity of people. So that is clearly showing the complexity of adaptation. Uh, elsewhere, large scale irrigation can be a solution because people are used to it. People have a kind of uh, knowledge, they have expertise, but this should not be copy paste elsewhere uh, and, and taken for granted. It needed to be uh, contextualized. It needed to be, uh, I would say, embedded in the context. So that's uh, what I can say here. Uh, and, and, the, and, and the political will, um, it's quite, it's also very important. Uh, I, I used to uh, tease my IPCC colleagues saying that, well, as a researcher, we are done when we offer evidence from the IPCC week. But uh, uh, I think, is not the end of this battle because we need to bring this a break the, 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 the message in a way that it can be accessible for policy uh, and makers. It needs also to be back or repacked in the way that it meets the needs. Political ways is not always a research will, it's not the same kind of, uh, of power. And we can see what happened in the approval process where policymakers said they have the higher agenda, they have their interests, and sometimes they want things to be like they see. So yeah, those are all part of the complexity. We can present evidence showing that, wow, this is something so we policymakers need to know. And it's not packed in the way that it's accessible to them. It can also uh, hit the uh, uh, they go or hit their aspiration or, or hit their interest. So this is a really a field of, um, of challenge uh, arena. Good. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm gonna note, uh, we're gonna take one last question in the room and then, and then we have to break. Um, but I'll note that there's a question from Laura in the chat and earlier a, qu a question from Ramesh Singh that is addressed to Benjamin uh, and myself. So uh, please, uh, even when we break in the room, if you could just take a minute and reply in the chat, that would be very wonderful. Uh, last question in the room, please. And please say uh, for, for, uh, for Edmund, your name and institution. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Edmund, for the very nice presentation. Uh, my name is Julie, and I'm from the Philippines. Um, my question is actually just to also uh, touch on the literature that you mentioned earlier. Uh, um, because um, I, I wonder on how the literature on the uh, adaptations uh, that are being done on the community level that are not being um, uh, published or not being forwarded in, in, in the literature that are being 
uh, assessed in the IPCC reports. I wonder if um, how uh, should uh, how these um, literature should be um, uh, um, uh, be forwarded into the uh, community so that it will be able to be integrated into the IPCC assessment and aside from just being published, or is there a way like IPCC also distills or filters this literature? Thank you, Julie. Well, the IPCC has a kind of, uh, I would say, rules. IPCC only consider published work in, in the assessment. Um, how IPCC evidence can be uh, communicate to local uh, to community. Uh, this is uh, where we need uh, 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 the media to support uh, 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 IPCC work in terms of communications in type in different style, different language, but also different type of format. Uh, and uh, how we can capture value uh, community knowledge. This is uh, uh, another. Uh, I would say set of challenge, how we can, we, we do use uh, gray literature, but uh, to a very limited extent, uh, because we uh, want to provide, I mean, the IPCC want to provide a robust evidence, which assume that it goes through review process and the gray literature is not always uh, under that one. But now, with this feasibility and assessment and uh, effectiveness assessment, what we are trying to do at this stage, and we are writing a couple of proposals around that, is how we move from literature based to community led process. So, we are going to use the same type of formats in terms of the six dimensions, as I mentioned institutional, economic, environmental. And each, in each community, we want to see how they frame institutions, how they frame technology, how they frame uh, uh, environmental. So we use those indicators to assess the adaptations uh, responses. So then it's uh, really a kind of local embeddedness assessment. And that shows the value because uh, we know that adaptation is also very context specific. So we expect that doing that can help to have something more reliable, uh, something that is uh, solid, at least for a specific community, and can be used locally. Because if we offer something that is only literature based, or it may not help at community level, it may not help at even country level, because if they contextualize. Thank you, Evan. Sorry, so, Julie, that's uh, what I can say. I hope uh, uh, you are uh, happy with that. Thank you, Edmund. So I, I think we have to break uh, in the room. I, I do just want to say last thing for Julie also is that there is a process by which uh, in, the, in the review process, first of all, you can read early drafts and suggest literature through the review process that should also be assessed. Um, and then once the, the scopes Scoping meetings happen, there are usually chapter outlines with at least several bullets, and, they, and you can find the names of the coordinating lead authors. So if you have a very important paper that you think needs to be assessed, you can contact those authors. But I'll also say as a, a former CLA, our job is not to make everybody happy as much as to find that unique piece of literature that helps. Do you want to add? Yeah, uh, yes. The, the also, the very good way is to publish a perspective paper in that case, if you think one topic is uh, yes. super important, that, because that would be uh, taken into account in the assessment. All right, so let's break, and we're, we're going to, um, I know we're a couple minutes late here. Uh, but I think Yaro is in the room, right? So we can, yeah, so we can, we're going to probably get started um, let's, let's do uh, like a 12 minute break. So we will be back here at 1110 at the, at the latest. What? All right, 1115 with permission of the speaker. Thank you.